Let's return to the market street and talk about the business of market data. Olufemi Onifade is joining us from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Our studio is live there. He's the acting head of our trading business division at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, Femi, it's good to have you uh, on the program. Uh, let's start this conversation around uh, mining data for investment decisions. Uh, uh, take us through why this is very important. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Boston, and thank you for having me. Um, data for investment decision, it, it's information. It's the life of taking any informed view on what you want to do or how, what sort of outcome you're expecting. So without having necessary information at your fingertips to understand the nuances around the assets or the underlying issuers that you're investing in, then you're essentially taking a blind bet. And uh, we all know how blind bets can go at times. Okay, so uh, what type of data are we talking about here? Mm -hmm. So with market data, it, it goes from the basic traditional open, high, low, close of security prices to everything else that fits through from the economy to the issuers, business, to volumes, to values traded, to um, soft information around initiatives and strategies that the business is doing. So essentially it's the whole gamut of everything that a, an investor needs to know that to inform what they do. But it also goes into how technology can be leveraged to deliver these information in real time and on time to inform how you stay in an investment, exit it, or take other views as the case may be. So I need uh, data for trade execution, trading positions, uh, whatever you call my analytics, and all of that. That's what the Nigerian Stock Exchange is sitting on. This is a mountain of Absolutely. data. Absolutely. And the way by which you leverage technology and information silences to process that information, to, to present it in a manner wherein it is actually useful to the end user to, to, to take info, information from that and to use that information profitably for economic purposes. Okay, so uh, what, how many years of information are we talking about here, for example? Okay, so in particular leading to this conference that we're dealing with on Friday, what we've tried to do always over the last three years is to create a melting pot, as it were, for captains of industry in finance, as well as captains of industry in the technology space, to essentially come together and discuss and deliberate on what innovations and what mechanisms and systems and advancements in <coughs> market processing info, data information as well as making this available through products and services to end users in order to enhance the way business functions and how economy prospers going forward. So this event has become the flagship event that serves as that melting pot to allow people to see what new innovations are coming into place. Um, it allows people to understand how technology is disrupting this world of finance when you're talking about fintechs and how this portends for the future of work and really the future of economies going forward. Okay, so when folks are, who are interested in, in big data sit together, one of the first things they want to know, Femi, is about data integrity, protection, uh, even though technology would deliver it. Uh, what about that? In data integrity? So data integrity is absolute, and part of what you do in setting up any um, data process or information system process is to make sure that everything that feeds into that process is from the authentic source, is as much as possible protected from hacks or any other form of interference or delays. So, and also it's about how you maintain that data to ensure that it's not distorted or maligned in any form. So at the exchange, we've taken huge investments. These things cause huge investments through requirements, and we've taken, made those investments a long time ago. Uh, we continue to make the investments. We've set up data centers 
that are state of the art. We made investments in 2013, if you recall, with the introduction of the new trading engine. And that trading engine has opened up a world of um, capabilities to our dealing community such that today, over 90% of trades that are executed actually don't happen on the physical floor of the exchange itself. And given that capability for direct market access, limiting the number of touch points of any form of human intervention in the processing and transmission of data and, and um, trade um, execution helps to protect the data integrity that you're speaking about. Okay, so how much more is the uh, will the Nigerian stock exchange be doing in, in this regard? Of course, we know every exchange in the world values data so much. Well, um, for us at the exchange, data and um, integrity of that data is the life of the business. Um, uh, also, to make sure that trade execution and matching is seamless and as efficient as possible. So, um, as part of our strategic objectives, over the la last year, we actually have repositioned the exchange to face the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution technologies and to look at ways by which we can leverage these technologies to provide additional services to our clients, understand our clients from a user experience uh, point of view, as well as to leverage innovation and um, fourth generation technologies to essentially reposition and redimension the way business gets done as a whole. So um, this conference uh, or this workshop is one of the, uh, the platforms by which we get to integrate and forge partnerships as well as to leverage and see what new systems and capabilities are happening both on a global scale and look at the adaptations of those within our own local environment. So it's a, it's a lifelong journey for us. We've set up our innovation hub just to make sure that we're keeping abreast of how to adopt these fourth industrial revolution technologies. We're looking at things like regulatory technology, leveraging technology to, to govern regulatory com compliance monitoring. And we're looking at how these feed also into the execution of our trading systems and product services going forward. So it's really exciting times for us, and I think um, the future is, is really bright. The future of fintech and data is here. Thank you very much, uh, Olufemi Onifa, the acting head of uh, Trading Absolutely. Business Division at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, live from our studios there. Still sticking with the market streets, let's talk about the debt market. And uh, Temple Ashad, you touched on that earlier when we started the show. Today, we're expecting the central bank to auction about 145 billion naira in uh, treasury bills. Uh, that in another 24 hours, that will be Thursday with a repayment of mature treasuries as well. So, how would all of this inform the size of liquidity as we get into the second half of the current trading week. Let's uh, move the conversation to the FMDQ exchange place where Shoma Udu, who's uh, the a fixed income dealer from GT Bank, is joining us live via Skype. Uh, Shoma, it's good to see you again. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Great. Uh, it's an exciting time when it gets to the middle of the week and I get a little bit excited because I know the auctions are coming, the repayments are coming, and it gives me an idea of what liquidity is coming from. So let's start from there. What's the outlook for this week's uh, midweek trading session, Wednesday? Okay, today, uh, because of the auction, we're going to see um, a very quiet market. Um, traders and um, um, everybody's going to submit their bids. Um, CBN is going to roll over what matured today, and we have about 147 billion. Um, on auction with um, most of the which most of the volumes at the longest end um, 364. So today we would go for the auction. We expect a quiet market on the fixed income space. Okay. So um, uh, if you look at Tuesday uh, transaction, looks like a bit of a sell off, a bit of a, of a bearish sentiment. Uh, not so much active in terms of the narrow bond. If you look at the uh, a net value of what was traded on at the uh, FMDQ uh, on the FMDQ platform. Uh, all this on in preparation for the FX intervention or what will happen next week at the at the DMO window. 
Oh, the sell-off was as a result of the tight market. Um, the money market opened about $100 billion, which is not as liquid as it usually is. So we've seen um, a lot of people sell their assets, especially at the short end of the curve, to generate liquidity. Um, coming into this week, we had the wholesale, and then there was a retail auction last week. So that thinned liquidity in the system. Um, again, we also um, have noticed that the sell-off is as a result of the auction today so that people can participate in the anticipated um, um, one-year auction, which we hope will come out at a higher um, yield so today. So when, uh, when we talk about liquidity, where is the money going? How do we open 100 billion era? Is it dropped in the ocean? Even for uh, a, a, a dealer like GT Bank, for example. <laughs> so so uh, where is the money going? Where are the inflows? Okay, so the liquidity was used to, uh, to fund FX transaction. Like I mentioned earlier, there was a retail auction on Friday last week. So we've seen a lot of um, volumes in that space. And also we had a wholesale auction where CBN offered about $100 billion. And also we've seen um, a lot of customers participating in the I&E window, where, which also takes out Naira liquidity for dollars. Mm. So uh, how do we then position for how do i position for this week with uh today's uh part of the rollover past new papers and tomorrow's matured uh, treasury bills on the central bank side all ahead of next week uh october uh dmo uh, naira bond auction um we're going to see a lot of participation in this auction especially today's zone because um, a lot of people or players are playing at the short end of the curve, especially the one year. There's going to be a DMO auction next week, and we are going to see some players there. So what we're going to do, this, what we're going to see this year is a lot of interest in the one year auction, the one year paper, the 364 days, where a lot of, where the, most of the bulk of the assets are going to be sold in, are offered. What yield are we looking at today, tomorrow? Um, we're going to see an uptick. We're going to see an uptick from the discount rate of um, 13.33 because um, what, about over 100, 100 billion is offered at the one year. So we expect an uptick in, that, in the yield there. 15%? Um, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> so what's, what's going to inform that? I'm not looking for anything significantly. I, am. I know how this, I know how this still works. Not with inflation data just out, and everybody's looking at. Okay, so if inflation is 11.28%, uh, uh, not as significantly uh, stronger as some folks uh, uh, forecast. So, uh, is this giving the fixed income space a bit of a breather? Um, the inflation, it was expected. It was already priced in because um, we have seen notice that um, because of the flooding. Um, agriculture, there was a, a, a considerable uptick in, in agriculture because of the flooding. That was already expected and priced in, in prices. Um, yes, we, we, we know that there's going to be an uptick in, we hope there's going to be, and we anticipate rather, an uptick in the rates at the auction today, especially at the long end, the one year. But how, how, how far it's going to go, we can't tell, but we know there's going to be an uptick. Uh, Chema, you fixed income dealers, you dealers like it when yields uh, look more sweet because uh, that's where you make money. Um, <laughs> well, everyone, um, um, everyone's wish is to get the best from their assets, you know, so the higher the yield, the best for whoever is investing in it, yeah. I love so that. Yes, you like I it. love that. It's fair. It's yeah. fair game. It's fair game. It's the market. Thank you. Thank you. Have it a great the market. day. Chioma Udu, fixing Thank you very dealer much. of uh, at a GT Bank, live to us from FMDQ Exchange Place uh, in downtown Lagos, Victoria Island. That is. Let's take a break. We'll be back after the break. We're checking in with the stock market, the first one hour of today's trading day.